Okay, we're going to be covering 3.5, Applications and Problem Solving. So we're going to be taking the things that we've been learning about solving equations and applying those techniques to some problems. So before we can do these uh, problems, we have to understand that the challenge is really trying to convert a word problem into a math problem. And so there's common words that we're going to see uh, that we want to kind of establish from the beginning here as indicators as to what we need to do mathematically. So if, let's take a look at some of these um, keywords that we look for for addition. If we ever see something like the sum of x and 7, this just means you're adding up x and 7, so x plus 7. 2 plus, the keyword there, plus. Um, 2 plus w would be, of course, 2 plus w. 3 added to, again, that's addition. 3 added to y, 3 plus y. <clears throat> 5 more than x, more than would be addition. So 5 more than x would be 5 more added to x. x increased by 4. Again, that's addition. <clears throat> you take x, you increase it by 4. <clears throat> so those are some key words to look for when we're talking about addition. Now, with subtraction, we have to be a little careful. And the reason we have to be careful is because subtraction doesn't work like addition in the sense that if I do 2 plus 3, that's the same as 3 plus 2. So with addition, it really doesn't matter what order you put things in. But if you do 2 minus 3, that is not equal to 3 minus 2, right? Because 2 minus 3, that's negative 1, and 3 minus 2 is positive 1. So we have to be very careful with the order of things whenever we're doing subtraction. So the difference of x and 2. Well, the difference of x and 2, this one's a little confusing. But we're going to take the difference, which would be x, and then you're subtracting 2. The second one, 200 minus y. This one's pretty uh, clear. You're just going to go 200 and minus y. Okay, this one right here is the con a really confusing one. 10 less than x. So what we want to do is imagine that we're, we're taking 10 away from x, right? We're 10 less than x. So like if x was 25. The answer here would be 10, I mean, sorry, 15, because we're taking 10 less than that. So the way to get that is to take the x and subtract the 10. Okay, not, do not do 10 take away x. That is not correct. Okay, p decreased by 4. So we're going to start with p, and we're going to take 4 away from it. q reduced by 5, same thing. q, we're going to take away 5 from it. 13 subtracted from our, okay, this one's confusing. Let me put a little star next to the confusing ones here, <clears throat> or the tricky ones, I should say. We're going to take 13 and subtract it from R. So we start with R, and we subtract 13 from it. Next one is a little tricky. 11, um, 11, oh, sorry, no, this one's okay. 11 less P, okay, that one is 11, and we're going to lessen it or reduce it by p, so less p. All right, let's see these things in action. Oh, wait, multiplication and division, sorry. Product, okay, the product of negative 5 and y. Product means multiplication, so negative 5 times y, which we could also just write as negative 5y. 30 times x, so 30 times x, which we would just write 30x. Twice L, twice L, two times L, so twice means doubling, so we're multiplying the L, 2L. Half of N, of is that multiplication, of half of N, so we multiply, so one half N. So just remember those dots there don't necessarily have to be there, but it means multiplication. All right, division. So when we have division, the quotient of x and 17, that's x divided by 17. t divided by 3. So you start with t, you divide that by 3. The ratio of 2 to c. We saw ratios before. So 2 on top, c on the bottom. And how about this one? m split into 5 equal parts. So you start with m, and you're going to cut it or divide it into 5 equal parts, m divided by 5. All right, how about equality? So what, how do we determine that we have an equal sign in our, in our mathematical statement? X is equal to 5. 
x is equal to 5. y is the same as z. y is the same as z. n plus 2, okay, so that's addition, n plus 2 is, that's our equal sign, is 11. p squared, okay, p and then square it, yields is our equal sign, 25. Okay, hopefully that kind of gets us ready. Now let's uh, take a look at some strategies for solving problems, the four P's. First prepare, we want to read the problem, figure out what is it you're trying to find, try and figure out what information you're given, okay. Uh, make a plan, choose a strategy, how to solve the problem, uh, you define any variables, write an equation. Process, carry out the strategy from step two. So if we uh, wrote an equation down, we'll go ahead and solve it. And then ponder, did, you know, does our answer make sense? Did we label everything correctly? So in other words, you know, try and check it if we can. All right, let's start with this first example. The sum of a number and 12 is 8. Okay, the sum. So I know I'm going to be adding something together here. The sum of what? Well, some number, right? A number. Well, I don't know what that number is, so let's call it x. So if I take some, the sum of some number x, and what am I adding it with? 12, right? So I'm summing those two numbers together, x plus 12. That is, that's our equal sign, 8. Okay, so let's just read through it again. The sum of a number in 12, so here's the sum of a number in 12, is 8. That seems right. Now this is a nice little linear equation. We learned how to solve these. I would just subtract 12 on both sides to try and isolate the x. So I get x, and then over here, 8 take away 12 is negative 4. There we go. <clears throat> okay, next one. The quotient, the quotient, so I'm thinking division, of a number, I don't know what that is, so I'm going to call it x, and 11 is, that's an equal sign, negative 2. So the quotient, I'm going to take a, a number I don't know, I'm going to call it x. The quotient of that and negative 11, right, it's the quotient of that number and negative 11, is negative 2. So now we have a, a nice equation again, a linear equation. Um, we have division underneath the x. So what we do here is we do the opposite, we multiply both sides by negative 11 over 1. Remembering that negative 2 is negative 2 over 1. And on the left side, the negative 11s cancel. We're left with just the x. On the right side, we multiply straight across, and we should get 22. Positive 22. Okay. Group work problem. The difference of 4 and a number is 7. So the difference, I'm using subtraction, the difference of negative 4 and some number, I don't know. So when I take 4 and some number and I take their difference, I get 7. So now, <clears throat> this is again as a linear equation, I'm going to add 4 to both sides to get the x term by itself. Okay, and then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. And so I just get x is equal to negative 11. <clears throat> okay, another group work problem here. The product of a number and 8 is negative 56. So the product, I'm thinking multiplication. The product of what? A number and 8. Okay, so if I take some number x and I multiply it times some number 8, I should get is, right, negative 56. So I'm going to rewrite the left side as 8x instead of x times 8. And now this is a linear equation, so all I'm going to do is divide both sides by 8. And I get x equals negative 7. All right, now a word problem. Bethany completed three times more, three times more, I'm thinking multiplication, three times more community service hours than Roger. If R represents the number of community service hours Roger completed, then write an equation for the number of community service hours Bethany completed. 
Okay, so R is how many um, service hours Roger did. I'm just going to put Roger. And what we know is that Bethany, I'm going to call it B, Bethany, she should have done three times more, right? Three times more whatever Roger did. So if Roger did R, then Bethany should have done 3R. And that's it. That's all we want here. It's just an equation that represents how many hours Bethany um, completed. So how many service hours did she complete um, in relation to Roger? Okay, let's work through this group work problem. In a year, Janice makes $7,000 less than what her sister Rebecca makes. If Rebecca makes X dollars a year, write an expression for the amount that Janice makes. So um, if, if Rebecca makes X, okay, this is what Rebecca makes. And Janice makes $7,000 less. Then Janice should make whatever Rebecca makes, which was X, take away 7000 and that is our expression that represents how much Janice would make. Okay, next one. Sandy bought eight tomatoes for C cents each. Write an expression for the total cost. Well, she spends C cents for each tomato and she bought eight. So are we going to add eight or multiply eight? Well, because she has to pay eight cents for each one, we will multiply eight times C. That's how much she's going to pay. All right, let me just look at this real quick, see how much we got to go here. Okay, two hikers on the Appalachian Trail hike from Hawk Mountain to um, Gooch Mountain. The next day they hike from Gooch Mountain to Woods Hole. The total distance is 19 miles. If the distance between Gooch Mountain and, and Woods Hole is five miles more than the distance from Hawk Mountain to, to Gooch Mountain, find the distance they hiked each day. Okay, what? All right, so what we know is that if you take the total distance, let's say the total distance will be the distance in the blue and the distance in the red added together. We know that, I'm going to call it the red plus the blue distance has to be equal to 19. We know that, all right? because that was given to us. The total distance is 19 miles. Now, they also tell us something about the distance between uh, Gooch and Wood and Wood Hole, Gooch Mountain and Wood Hole. So that's our red distance. Okay, Th this red distance is five miles more than, than the distance from Hawk Mountain to Gooch Mountain. So this is five miles more than the distance from here to here, which we will call X, because we don't know what it is. So we know that from Gooch Mountain to Woods Hole is five more than the distance from um, Hawk Mountain to Gooch Mountain. So now what we know is, if we come over here and rewrite this, the red part we know is five plus X. Plus, we know the blue part is just X, and then we get 19. So now we just combine this together. Um, x plus x gives us 2x equals 19. And now we have a nice little linear equation. We'll subtract 5 from both sides. We'll get 2x equals 14. And then we divide both sides by 2. So x equals 7. Now, that's not our final answer because they wanted to know how far they, they hiked each day. So on the first day, they went from Hawk Mountain to Gooch Mountain. Okay, so on the first day, they did this. And that was X. And we said that that was 7. So 7 miles. And then on day 2, they hiked from Gooch Mountain to Woods Hole on the second day. And we know that that's this distance, and that's 5 plus x, but we know x is 7. So this is 5 plus 7, which equals 12 miles. 
First day they hiked seven miles, second day they hiked 12 miles, total distance 19 miles. And notice that uh, the distance here uh, from uh, Gooch Mountain to Woods Hole is five more than from Hawk Mountain to Gooch Mountain. So everything satisfies what we were trying, or what we were given. Okay, a 20 foot board is cut into two pieces. Okay, so we have a 20 foot board we know the total distance here is 20. Okay, so when we cut it, we cut it in two pieces, and, and we don't really know where we cut it. Let's just make an arbitrary cut. If the longer piece is eight feet um, more than the smaller one, find the length. So when I cut it, when we cut it, let's say that this is the smaller piece, and we don't know what it is, so let's call it X. They're telling us that the longer piece is eight feet more than the smaller one. So this longer piece should be eight feet more than the smaller piece, which is x. And so what we know is that when you take the longer piece, which is eight plus x, and add it to the smaller piece, we have to have 20 foot board. And this is very similar to the previous problem. We can combine the x's together. That's two x, two x. We can subtract eight on both sides. Get two x equals 12 and then x equals 6 when we divide both sides by 2. So 6 feet. So the smaller piece is 6 feet, and the larger piece, or longer piece, is whatever, six, whatever x is, which is 6, right, plus 8. 6 plus 8 is 14 feet. So we can see that when you add those two together, you get 20, but then also the larger piece is 8 feet longer than the small piece. Okay, let's try this one. Mercedes is paid a salary of $480 a week. So Mercedes is paid $480 per week. She, she worked 8 hours of overtime during the holidays, and her weekly paycheck came out to be $672. What was her overtime pay? Or what was her overtime pay per hour? Okay, this is a little tricky. So she normally, this is normal, she normally makes 480 a week. But in one particular uh, week, some other week, she made $672 because she worked, she worked overtime, okay? That means over what she um, normally does, okay? So let's take the difference of these two. Let's see how much more she made per week. Uh, you know, how much more she made by working overtime. So we take 672 and we subtract from it 480. We just do this by hand. Nine. So $192 more. That's how much more she made, right? So we're not being asked for what her overtime pay per hour, um, overtime, how much more she made. We're saying we're being asked how much was her overtime per hour. Well, how many hours did she work? She worked eight hours of overtime, and and the 192 is how much more she made. So all we need to do to figure out her her pay per hour is to take the 192 dollars and divide it by the eight hours. And you can do that by hand, or you can do that on a calculator, and you will get $24 per hour. There we go. Okay, hopefully that will help you on the homework. We'll get started on the next section.